Chapter One Dr. James Petalidi drove slowly along the tree-lined drive leading to the main gates. As he rounded the curve, the entrance came into view, with a mansion looming in the background. He was fully aware of what this beautiful building contained. He was not impressed. The building was filled with some of the most vicious killers he had ever encountered during his years as a psychiatrist. As the coal rolled to a stop, he watched the security cameras turn silently on the pedestrians towards the, his car. A few seconds later, the gate swung silently open, allowing him to drive through. In the rearview mirror, he watched the gates close. He heard a slight tumble of the locks. The journey from the main gate to the circular drive in front of the mansion was a wonder. The drive was formed with hand laid bricks, the same kind as were used for plantation drives before the Great Civil War. To his left were a large pond with gleaming white benches, a ornate gazebo that stood proudly in the afternoon sun, high mountain beyond gave the scene a surreal sense of paradise. Aleti was a world of illusion for those who had not the slightest idea and went on behind the locked doors. James laughed easily, grinning to himself, as he was a self disciplined man who was well behaved and a keen observer. His very sailing seeding hairline had nothing to prove upon his orchish features. A doctor arrived at the first entrance of the mansion. A large man in blue suit greeted him with a smile as he stepped from his car. Welcome to Anetti. It's good to see you again. If you will follow me, we'll get you to your accommodations. Stepping lightly through the ornately barred stained glass doors, James walked through the foyer with his escort with into a spacious office to, in, to his right. Although he had been there before, it always felt like a new experience for, to him. A splendidly dressed young woman behind the desk greeted him politely and requested his identification. Because his identification had always retained here until it was time for his departure from the facility, it was very little chat and neither did she offer any information as to her own identity. Standing next to the security guard, James appeared to be small in stature, though he easily measured six foot in height. His slim build gave the impression he was a much smaller man. Smiling quietly to the young woman, named, handed the young lady handed James his identical badge for the facility and wished him a good pleasant day. Leaving the office, James and his escort reported to the office. Reported to an office, uh, who was waiting for them just outside the door. Without a word, James followed them, him, them up the stairs and down the long hallway. There were no numbers on the doors. Each room had a mean of identification, unknown to anyone but the staff and Lee. It made little difference because the residents were never allowed to be unescorted beyond the doorways on their own, of their own suits. The only recreation they had was spending time on their balconies. They were never allowed to spend more than an hour at a time there. The sound of Jesus James' shoes barely whispered on the deep piled blood red carpeting. He had always admired the craftsmanship of the panelling adorning the walls, which were devoid of pictures and paintings. Cameras that watched the hallway were hidden in such a manner that the person would never know their existence unless they had been told of the locations. When they reached James' suit, suit sweet, the officer opened the door and escorted James inside. The officer said, Everything you have requested is at your disposal, Doctor. Your first present patient will be available for you at 9 a.m. as you requested. Should you require anything during the night, you pick up your phone and an operator will assist you. Dinner will be served at your convenience. James nodded politely. He heard his speech many times. He, each time the officer acted if he had never seen James before. He heard the door shut quietly before him, behind him, as the officer left the room. It was a quaintly decorated suite that was provided for visiting doctors. There was never more than one doctor on the premises other than general practitioner in case of an accident. His quarters were unknown to anyone except the staff, and James had never met the practitioner. All things considered, he felt the chances of meeting him were almost none. Oftentimes, if something did occur, practitioner would leave a copy of his findings with the patient's psychiatrist, so he would be aware of anything that happened. James had four patients. He would see each in turn. Three of the patients he had were attending for at least two years. 
The fourth patient was new to the facility. According to the facts in his records, he was worth a trip for James to see him. James was intrigued by Adam, Adrian Bolt's case. He too carried, away, carried many secrets about his great nation's leaders, making him qualified for his room, for the, his rooms here at Adeline. Adeline. Pulling the file from his briefcase, James opened it with a flourish and placed it on the desk in front of him. Mr. Bolt had been convicted of murdering his wife. James had always been a bachelor and could never understand that what that would be a significant reason for a man to kill his wife. Being a psychiatrist and dealing with masses never had given him a reason he would accept. A spouse is supposed to be someone a person loved and desired to, to spend their life with. It's not just a simple gunshot wound or a case of strangulation. When Bolt was arrested, his wife's body lay in front of him, completely torn apart. He'd been hacked to death by an antique sword. That was two years prior to this being brought to Anorette. That never spoken about the death of his wife. The cases of hundreds of people in catatonic states of committing crimes. Bolt's case was far different. He's not catatonic. He just refused to speak to anyone. Bolt never entered a plea in court in his defence. When the jury brought him a verdict of guilty of murder, first degree, he simply nodded and sat down in his chair. He's never a problem for any of the police officers, anyone, those involved in his case. Each and every psych evaluation brought no closer to finding the solution to the case of author and historian Adrian Bolt. Closed in the file, James leaned back in his chair and stared at the walls. There had to be a way to get this man to open up his mind to him before it's too late. A person stayed in this condition too long, long enough, would eventually go completely insane. Judging from the facts involved in his wife's death, a profile he had on Adrian, James found it difficult to believe that Adrian had murdered his wife. There was no prior history of violence towards others. Adrian didn't have so much as a parking ticket to his credit. The evidence presented did not fit Adrian's profile. Regardless of the professional opinions, James sat at the desk, tapping on the file, tap of the file with his forefinger. Are you a mystery to me, Mr. Bolt? You are a mystery. I have no, I have to unravel my own, for, for my own satisfaction. He picked up the phone and ordered a sandwich and coffee. As the night went on, his mind kept returning to Adam Bolt's file. Disgusted with his inability to concentrate, he placed the file on the corner of his desk and got ready for bed. The phone rang early the next morning, jointing James from his sleep. A pleasant voice on the other end of the line reminded him of his first appointment for the day. He thanked the landlady and placed the phone back into his cradle. He raised himself slowly from the bed and handed it to with each visit to Adelaide, he found it hard to believe the bathroom was almost as large as his bedroom at home. His shower and shave complete, he ordered breakfast and made himself ready for his first appointment. He never wore a traditional business suit or even a modest blazer to receive his pages. James preferred to wear casual sports attire and effort to place his patients at ease. First appointment was Adrian Bolt. When his appointments were complete, he would call them for the schedule of, of his other pages. James covered his recorder and notes in preparation for his interview with Adrian Bolt. He had to admit even a man's name had a certain ring to it. Using a man's name was something you could not judge by a degree because they never meant, met face to face. James found it impossible to to judge Adrian from anything. Soon James and his escort were walking to the elevator, headed for the third floor. They spoke very little until they reached the door of the patient. This is Mr. Bolt, sweet. He's monitored at all times. If you have a problem with your patient, we'll be here with you without you having to call out. Just lift the phone when you're ready to leave. Enjoy your visit. The escort stated to, stated to all of us, all of us, this as if he was ready, reading from a notepad, stuck somewhere in the back of his mind. Unlocking the door, he escorted James to the room, announced his presence. Adrian Bolt was at large, wing back a Victorian chair that faced the picture window of his suite. Nodding towards James, the escort left the room, closing the door quietly behind him. James introduced himself to, and, quite, and asked quietly if he could may sit down. 
Silence filled the room around him. It was not an awkward silence, nor it was uncomfortable. It was a deep nemesis, void with no boundaries. Adrian refused to acknowledge be the knowledge of being in the room with him. James looked around at the suite. The opulence was fit for a king. He knew each suite was designed for individual tastes for life. But these rooms did not reflect James Adrian's personality. Reaching to his pocket, James pressed the record button on his mini recorder. James coughed lightly and proceeded with trying to communicate with Adrian. Adrian, I'd like to help you. Is there anything you need to like to say to me today? Adrian did not move and continued sights, staring at the balcony to the distant hills. James watched Adrian sitting upright in his chair by the window. He had thought Adrian would have been a much larger than the person seated before him. Adrian's small in stature, barely, barely reaching five feet nine inches. Adrian's reputation to James Field made him larger than the man who sat there now. Nothing about his spoke of a ra- being a brave man, or the matter of calculating killer, his neatly trimmed hair, the tailored clothing, only added to the air of mystery. James looked at the breakfast tray close to Adrian, and said, "You don't have to. You don't have to. Didn't you have your breakfast this morning?" Barrage of questions met with no resistance. Only in the silence, Adrian filled the air. James pulled a chair. And that's the end of that sample.